Yeah, so this is just a quick uh, introductory to getting started with uh, Pwn College. Um, Pwn College uh, is a binary exploitation um, instruction, uh, actually a college program uh, that's run out of the Arizona State University. Um, but they set up a for free um, uh, YouTube class and a CTF style um, instructional. Um, so we're gonna go over that real, real quick. We're gonna go over what it is, um, just how to jump in, making sure you're ready because there's a lot of uh, questions in there when they talk about it uh, and I'll give you my opinion about it. Um, just a quick introduction to the challenges, kind of go through what I've seen. Uh, you know, I'm pretty, pretty new at uh, this type of stuff. So uh, if I have experience, it's a long time ago. So uh, I just wanna make it uh, more approachable for everybody and um, just drop a few of the tips that I had that helped me get along, or maybe looking backwards, if I had uh, done some things, it would have been a little easier. Um, so yeah, like I said, Pwn College, uh, CTF-oriented learning environment. Um, it's got a kind of a martial arts type of idea with the idea of even having uh, belts, which is, for me, coming from like having some experience in martial arts is like a motivator. <laughs> so, uh, so you can get a yellow belt, blue belt for getting through things. Uh, there, but it comes with this martial arts mentality of like you're going to repeat and like incrementally get better, and uh, um, and you'll learn a lot. Um, there's like I said, classes on YouTube as well as office hours, which I find the office hours are a lot of times more juicy uh, than the actual classes. The classes seem like uh, just dropping little breadcrumbs, and then you can actually get a full meal in the in the office hours. So. Um, I think they're streaming normally on Twitch, but uh, I don't know if they're doing it this semester. It was more active last semester, but you can catch up with everything on, on YouTube. And then there's an active Discord uh, where you get a lot of uh, great tips when you're, when you're stuck. Uh, and it's great so that you don't feel so uh, isolated and like on your kind of, kind of on your own island uh, by yourself trying to <laughs> figure these things out. So, um, so yeah, you'll go through the, if you start the YouTube, uh, videos, you know, that, that's kind of where I started, I picked up a playlist and was like, okay, well, let's see what all this is. You know, it sounds, it sounds like, oh man, we're going to be dealing with just ones and zeros here. Uh, am I, am I ready for, for all that? And even, even the instructor, Jan is like, you know, this is, this all should be review for you. And so, you know, you might get a little nervous about that, especially maybe you haven't gone through these, maybe you went through some CS courses uh, in college and and you're like okay maybe i touched on that i'm just not yes yes you are ready <laughs> to to do this yeah uh, i would say like there's a if there's a small caveat it would only be if you're like actually taking the course and like for a grade and you've got like you know uh money on the line if you're just like i'm gonna do this for fun like don't don't wait just go and 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 register um so yeah how do you start so uh that you can just go straight to uh, dojo.pwn.college and you can sign, you can register, um, log in right away and then hack right into, they have a built-in Visual Studio code uh, in, in the browser there. So you can, uh, they have an environment set up for you. It resets after every challenge that you start. Um, but if you, um, you know, unless you want to just, um, you can give them an SSH key and they identify you based on that SSH key. They persist your environment. Uh, it shuts down from time to time. So just be mindful of that. If you have like some unsaved Vim instance there, like you probably don't wanna do that, um, but you'll have all your files over and over again. Uh, so don't worry about that. And I didn't even finish that part. Executables are in challenges, the, cha the slash challenges directory. So if you're like me and just like, started exploring without actually reading the, the homepage. That's good to know. Cause I started fishing around, like uh, did a find for flag and oh, okay, there's a flag there. See what I could do for it. And oh, there's a whole set of directions. So yeah, go, go read, uh, I mean, explore to your heart's content but then uh, be sure and read the main pages, right? Uh, so these are the three modules that I went, I've gone through initially, uh, kind of the type of person that wants to make sure that I don't miss the knowledge because I don't want to get stuck later on and thinking, oh man, if I had only done this other, uh, the initial ones, then maybe I wouldn't be stuck here. Uh, so program interaction is gonna be uh, 
just running, let's see, do I have a little description here? Yeah, so program inter, uh, interaction topics. So running the challenge executable in bash C or Python, um, doing it in C was really great for me because I had, it had been a long time since I had done a C and it was real basic. So um, my solutions that I have in my notes are pretty ugly because I start forking and I don't uh, check for which is the child or parent. So I get two instances of things like that. So uh, I can, it's cool to see in my notes, like, okay, I'm, I'm learning some things uh, and then end up having some clean C code by the end of 140 of these. So, so yeah, you deal with, you know, you might be uh, familiar with uh, your regular standard in, standard out, and standard error, uh, but there's a ton of other file descriptors that are possible and they'll have you mess with those. Signals, uh, you've undoubtedly used them if you've control C to stop a program or uh, anything like that. Uh, but there's lots of other ones that you'll get somewhat familiar. They're not gonna go into the detail of every single one, but they'll have you uh, put maybe quite a few signals into a, a particular process. There's some, uh, some sim links that are there and some shenanigans of like where it'll look, the challenge will look to see where your executable is coming from, or at least where uh, it thinks it's coming from. And then there's like some computation that's thrown through all these that really uh, spices it up. So, you know, if you've got a, uh, and I think I missed another one of um, FIFOs, you'll also get FIFOs. And so you'll, you'll have to have a FIFO on the standard in, standard out, and then you'll have a uh, 500 computations that'll have to happen that are impossible to do by hand. Uh, and uh, you'll have to figure out how to, to manage all those. And so uh, by the end of it, you'll, um, if you're like me, you'll have a lot more confidence in how all that works. Um, program misuse I found was, uh, it was a lot shorter, a lot easier, probably because I cheated, uh, but I think uh, in our, maybe in our world cheating is okay. Uh, depends how much uh, you know base knowledge you want to have. Um, so the the program misuse is just basically having setting up an executable that's been set with the suit uh, bit that allows you to uh, is makes it so that it's executed as if it's owners running it. So oftentimes that can be uh, as root, and so that'll get you some uh, some higher privileges if you abuse it. Um, so there's good reasons for you, things that you would do that, right? Like if you're going to execute um, password to change your password, you have to have some ele elevated privileges to do to change Etsy, Etsy shadow, right? But like you might think, hey, I'm just going to, you know, I want to let some user set the date here, right? We're doing some kind of experiment and changing the date. So we'll just allow for that. But that has a vector. If you do a suit bit on that sticky bit, then you will enable a pathway to uh, giving them root access to your box. So don't do that. <laughs> um, and the last one where I'm in now trying to finish is uh, an assembly refresher. So my experience was uh, a gazillion years ago, you uh, having like a budget um, uh, Motorola microcontroller that had little lights on it. It was probably a decade too old in the lab that, that we had. Uh, and so getting into actual um, processor uh, assembly was great. Um, and they make it uh, really nice with Pwn tools um, to just uh, set up your challenge here. You can, you know, it's all based on the user, on the host name of that box at the time that you have the challenge. So you can just run it like this. Uh, I want to put this here because unless you look at the, um, um, the office hours, you won't know to do this unless you've already had the experience. You might, uh, you know, go the, just the self uh, GCC uh, S trace uh, route, which I have very little experiences, so I probably uh, didn't say that right. So, um, and so just some tips for getting started. Um, like there, I showed that you're going to be using Pwn tools. You know, don't be afraid to use it or too cool to do it because I was I wanted to do a lot with just uh, uh, Python P open. And so I wanted to get more comfortable with that and deal with some of the um, rawness, I guess, like the not the comfort that Pwn Tools gives you. But then I ended up having to learn it more in assembly refreshers, just get comfortable with it. Um, take notes on your solutions. Um, you know, what you have there, it'll get more complicated. So um, I used uh, Obsidian in there and I just went, you know, uh, one after the other and it really helped because sometimes you'll just, uh, run right next to 
uh, to, to the next challenge. And you could just almost copy the previous one and then just tweak it and you'll save yourself a lot of headache. Um, like I said, I cheated for the program misuse. So I looked up uh, most of these on GTFO bins. Um, I'm the type of person that's like, if there's already a, an encyclopedia for this thing, I don't necessarily need to know all of that. Uh, there's definitely parts that you want to like know the inner workings, right? That's our job is to like know, that's how we'll end up creating more interesting uh, exploits, right? Is by knowing the pathways of how things work. But in terms of just like, you know, if the thing's there, like we don't always like memorize how to get reverse, uh, like a, a reverse shell on Python or, um, or in any other language, right? We kind of look those up, copy and paste. Uh, we might know how it works, but we're not going to, you know, waste memory in our brains for that. And so I encourage that as well. There's some there that aren't just easily looked up. And there's actually, if you haven't done it, uh, there's one that there's considered a zero day in there. So be on the lookout for, for that one there. Um, you know, for me in the process of doing assembly right now, you just got to pay attention to the size of the data that, that's in the inst instructions that they have that's provided there. And then, you know, just pay attention to the registers and how you're dealing with that. And that'll probably be most of your headache. Um, and then, yeah, when you're uh, having a hard time, you know, you've done, you know, all of your different permutations of what you think is uh, possible, and you can't do it anymore, you know, go, go look up the, the level number that you have in the particular Discord channel, and you'll find, you know, at least uh, some consolation with other people pulling their hair out, and then maybe some tips to say, oh, okay, maybe you didn't try it this way, or maybe you should go in that direction. So yeah, that's pretty much it. You can go into it maybe more on uh, some examples next time, but.